Sports. We are We are It started 10 days ago. First up, the Nationals. But Danny Echeverria and Giancarlo Stanton provided the punch of Marlins sweep. Next up, the first place Mets. Miami's Martin Prado played the hero in game two. In game three, Ichiro's big moments. Now it's the Phillies. In game one, Marcelo Zuna provided the walk-off punch. Yesterday, Martin Prado took care of business. Today, the Marlins go for the sweep. Sunday, the Marlins indeed go for the sweep and try to finish what has been a fantastic homestand. The Phillies at 8 and 17. Look at the pitch at an even 500. John Carlos Stanton, bright and ready. The Solanos are in there. A double duty Solano day as the Marlins and the Phillies finish off a three game set and a former Philly draft pick, Jared Cozart. Is on the mound for the fish. Hi, everybody. Rich Waltz along with Tommy Hutton. I asked you this question about, oh, what, five days ago when the Marlins had a chance to sweep the Washington Nationals. You don't get this opportunity often in baseball. When you do, you got to take advantage of it. Well, you really do. And uh, certainly in that national series, the Marlins swept that series, have a chance to sweep the Phillies, by the way, for the first time since late June 2012. Because of the way the season has gone, Mike Revin hasn't really had a chance to give some regulars a day off, but he will today as we take a look at JM Lexus starting lineup. What do you see? What do you think? Well, I'll tell you what, I love this. I think this is necessary to do this during the course of a long season to get guys like Brignac, Solano, Solano in the lineup. Marcelo Zuna, a key. Another guy that I think is a real key today is Michael Morse, mainly because he's hit 344 with nine career home runs against the Philadelphia Phillies. Starting pitchers in this one. Jared Cozart has been dynamite of late. His last two starts really, really good, including a win over the Phillies. Severino Gonzalez made his Major League debut last week, and it did not go well. Yeah, the only blemish for Cozart in Philadelphia was a Cody Ashey home run. All of a sudden, Cozart has strung together 12 consecutive scoreless innings. The Marlins have never seen Severino. We'll get a chance to look at him today. And Jared Cozart getting ready to go. The Marlins and the Phillies coming up. We've talked about all the hitting heroes, but you know what? The Fish have won 9 of 10. And in those 10 games, the pitching and the starting pitching has been dynamite.
Let's go out to center field, Craig Minervini, Jeff Conan. All right, Rich Waltz, thank you very much. Good afternoon again, everybody. The Marlins are trying to make it 8 and 1 on the homestand, and they'll do it. And what has been leading the way for Miami has been the starting pitching today is Jared Kozark's turn. Yeah, Jared Kozark uh, coming off a New York Mets start. We had eight innings pitch, gave up only two hits. The best start by a Marlins starter this year. And looking to build off of that, you see 2.49 ERA on the season. One run his last 14 innings for Cozart. He'll face the 22 year old in Severino Gonzalez. But you look at the Marlins starters who mentioned Cozart leading the way during the 7 1 homestand. It's just been one after another. Yeah, it's been impressive. 7 and 1 on the homestand. See the opponent average just 208. And look at the bottom. So on the season, 112 hits allowed, which is the fewest in the National League. You know, we're going to talk about the 22 year old. And Severino Gonzalez, who will make uh, his second start and a rough start against St. Louis. But he's a guy the Phillies have liked a lot in the minor leagues. Yeah, tons of potential, a lot of upside, they believe. Uh, but you see what he did last time out against the Cardinals, seven earned runs in just two and two-thirds. So hopefully the Marlins can jump on him early and uh, give Jared Kozar a lead. All right, and the Phillies uh, will face a Marlin lineup without Prado, without D. Gordon. Are they... Uh, are they enthused about that? Do they notice that? It's a it's a it's a Sunday mix up. You got to get your bench guys in there, get them some uh, consistent at bats, so you can rely on them later in the season. Uh, that's a good idea. All right, long season, but the Marlins are on a great run. They're looking for the sweep. They're second on the homestand. Coming up next on Fox Sports Florida. by Toyota. Let's go places. And by AutoNation, save on over 70,000 vehicles now. Visit AutoNation.com. Pull up a chair. Maybe a beach chair will work as well as the Marlins go for a sweep of the Phillies and try to make it five wins in a row and 10 of their last 11. And they send Jared Cozart to the mound in search of that win. Cozart ready to go. First pitch. And it's down low. Pinch a penny bringing you the first pitch. Ben Revere, Chase Utley, and Darren Ruff for the Phils. Cozart, the 24 year old. Roller up the middle. Solano on one knee, and Revere can fly. And there's not a second baseman in baseball that gets him on that play. Yeah, you got to see some changes in the uh, defense. There's the lineup. Go ahead, Rich, give the lineup. J.M. Lexus brings it to you. Ben Revere, Chase Utley, Darren Ruff, Ryan Howard, Grady Sizemore, Cody Ashey, Cesar Hernandez at short, Cameron Rupp will do the catching. 
Severino Gonzalez hits ninth. Cozart's fifth start. The opponents are hitting just a buck 84. Revere is a threat to run at first base. Yeah, we talked about this Phillies club struggling to score runs. You, you know, they're going to try a few things. Ryan Sandberg, from what I was uh, reading, had a, had a team meeting uh, after their game last night. So he's trying to create a few things. Revere chase back. Yeah, the Phillies five in a row in this road season so far. They're two and eleven on the road. Utley's been in the three spot in the first two games of this set. It's the first time we've seen Jonathan Solano behind the plate. He works this ball game with Cozart. Yeah, we saw him a couple of years ago with the Nationals. We saw him in spring training, a very solid receiver. One one. I would think, Rich, maybe our ratings in Columbia will take a, a spike in the right direction today. Yeah, not only are the uh, brothers on the same team. Only 14 players from Columbia have played in the big leagues, but here they are in the starting lineup. They've played together in winter ball, and obviously when they were quite younger. Runner goes, Revere, a good jump, and it was a hit and run. He was peaking, and Utley was swinging. Counts two and two. I think certainly if you are Ryan Sandberg, you really have nothing to lose in, in terms of. Starting runners being aggressive trying to create offense because the Phillies are scoring just two and a half runs a game. That's the worst in Major League Baseball. You know part of that's trying to get something going for Utley too, who comes into this game with a 115 batting average. And a fastball swing and a miss Utley goes down and the struggles continue for Chase Utley. Boy, he rides that fastball middle in and basically threw that pitch by a really good hitter in Chase Utley. I think some are surprised that you don't see more strikeouts on the line of Jared Cozart. 12 strikeouts, 13 now. A little over 25 innings. He has tremendous stuff as far as fastball. It's the other stuff setting it up that keeps his strikeouts down. But if he keeps throwing the way he has, three of his four starts have been of the quality variety. Stay with that. Darren Ruff, big right handed bat. Revere runs, and Ruff fouls it back, and Revere will jog back to first for the second time. Yeah, that one more of the straight steel variety. He's not going to hit and run with Ruff. Plus, I don't think uh, Ben Revere took a peek that time. Miami has won nine of ten, four in a row. Sits at 500 at 12 and 12. Revere runs again, and this one sprayed over to Morse's spot. Michael Morse has it, steps on the bag. And there are two outs, and, ladies and gentlemen, BMW brings you Miami's defense. Well, we told you there'd be some changes. Ichiro Ozuna Stan. No changes out there. Reed Brignac making a start at third base. A lot of his games in the major leagues have been at shortstop, but he has started over 30 times at third. Echevarria Solano up the middle. Michael Morse and Jonathan Solano behind the plate. Ryan Howard 0 for 7 with four strikeouts in this series. Miami's infield is shifted over with Revere at second. Brignac a, a long ways away from the bag. And Howard Ryan. takes a letter high strike. Paul Schreiber's calling balls and strikes. Clint Fagan's at first. Brian O'Nora's at second. Manny Gonzalez the umpire at third on this Sunday. 
getaway day for the Marlins. They head up to start a three game series with the Nationals, who are suddenly hot. That will be tomorrow night in D.C. Oh, and two. Talked a little bit about Jared Cozart. Here's a look at his grips. There's the four seam fastball, the curveball, which he uses that uh, pointer finger, somewhat of a spike curveball, and a change up, a circle change. Oh, two to Ryan Howard. Ooh, Gozart thought he had it. A lot of Marlin defenders took a step towards the dugout, but he missed it in. A good call by Paul Schreiber. That's a leaner. Everybody in the infield leaning, thinking it's a called third strike. You get a catcher that sets up in, you hit the hit the glove, that's the natural reaction. One, two. Howard out in front. And the count stays one ball and two strikes. Chuck Hernandez has to be really proud of the job that his pitchers have done. You saw that the numbers on this homestand. One two line down the left field line and out of play if you stretch it out. Marlins pitching starters relievers over the 10 games. Miami's won nine of 10. The ERA is 1.80. Not given up more than three runs a game in any game during that time. And certainly a credit to Chuck as well. Of course, that's without Henderson Alvarez. It's without Jose Fernandez. One, two to Ryan Howard. Got him. Fastball. Jared Cozart looks sharp in the first. We're underway in Miami. The Marlins looking for a sweep, looking to stay hot against the Phillies. Some Solano fans in the ballpark. Our Toyota trend. We've talked uh, pitching. Let's flip it over to offense. And on the homestand, the Marlins trying to go eight and one on the homestand. A healthy average, not only there, but with runners in scoring position, nice on base, nice slugging, good numbers all around. And Severino Gonzalez, the 24-year-old out of Panama, will try to. Slow down the fish. He's got Ichiro leading it off. And that would be strike one. Ichiro, Adani Echeverria, and John Carlos Stanton. D. Gordon getting the day off. Gordon just lighting it up of late. He was three for three yesterday. 
Six for seven in this series. So Gordon gets to watch this one at least initially. Pitcher's bunt is popped foul. Yeah, it's uh, really interesting. You you give D Gordon, which Mike Redman did, gave him the day off, and you're able to put a guy at the leadoff spot who's hit leadoff almost 1,800 times in his career. Ichiro. Ichiro takes outside, and it's three and two. It's one of the things the Marlins. Said they wanted to do coming out of spring training is try to keep D. Gordon fresh into the second half of the season. Ichiro walks, lays down the bat, and he's aboard to open up Miami's first. And as well, Martin Prado has been playing hard. He got hit with the pitch. He's fine, but chance to give Prado a day off, Gordon a day off. And JT Real Muto a day off as well. Yeah, you, you just don't know how valuable it is to have a lineup such as this one today. I give Mike Redman a lot of credit for doing that and getting these guys in who, who certainly need to get some time. Here's Echeverria, each row from first. And Echeverria takes a strike. When you can slide your eight hitter into the two spot, and he's hitting 326, and as hot as Echeverria has been, National League Player of the Week last week. That's a pretty thick lineup. Breaking ball in. Severino Gonzalez doesn't have but one start in the big leagues to lean on here. Kind of a slender guy, 6'2, 155. Good lead by Ichiro. He's running on the pitch, swing and a miss. Throw down, and Ichiro's got the bag stolen. First stolen base of the year. Really nice jump, straight steal, and just straight on slide. Look how he gets that lead leg, that foot right on the bag. So he throws it second. Breaking ball. Echeverria checks his swing. Clint Fagan. Says no swing and the count goes two and two. He's so good at shooting the ball to the right side. Now that could come in handy. Nobody out. Each row at second. And Etch out front just got a piece. Given the fact that uh, Gonzalez, the young pitcher, lasted just two and two thirds innings in St. Louis, his first uh, major league start. Not a whole lot of video, so I'm sure guys watched some of it, but it's uh, a lot of just standing in and uh, seeing what he has, what his stuff does. A walk and a stolen base, and each rose in scoring position. Fastball in. Full count. Fox tracks, it was well in. Good job by Paul Schreiber behind the plate. Runner goes, swing and a miss, throw down to third. Each row swipes third. Well, the, the 41 year old just schooled the 22 year old and he knew that Severino Gonzalez was just focused on throwing a strike. He never looked at each row didn't pay any attention to him and each row with a great jump. Now John Carlos Stanton. Phillies have their infield back chance to drive in a run Stanton sitting at 23 runs driven in on the season goes after the first pitch drives it right center field Sizemore is over and there each row tags on his way home and Stanton delivers the run Miami's up one nothing well you thought maybe with uh, D Gordon Getting the day off, you'd lose a little uh, excitement at the top of the order. Not so. Well, each row decided he knew that D. Gordon has reached base nine consecutive times. 
He figured, well, I'm leading off. I better do the same thing. Not only did he do that by a walk, he stole two bases, got to third base, scored easily on that sack fly from Giancarlo. And nice to see Stanton not trying to do too much, just looking for a pitch he can drive. He got it. He delivered. And here is Ozuna. Fouls one straight back. It is 0-1. There have been hot hitters all over the place for Miami on this homestand and on this run. Frank Menachino, Miami's hitting coach, is the 0-1. Oh, and Ozuna's one of those guys, Tommy. He's eight for his last 15. You know, another thing that's uh, kind of been hidden, we, we talk about it uh, on this homestand, is the fact that the little things have been done as well. Perfect example, the sack fly with Ichiro at third base, less than two out. Fastball up and in. Ozuna bends back. It's one and two. Another fastball in. And he got him like a change up 87 miles an hour. So a pair of strikeouts for Gonzalez, but a run for Miami. Dolls. Sweet. Rand Eye Vision Cam brings you. And it's Scout Day today. The Scouts are here. They're getting Bob the Shark dolls. Keep your eye on the ball. Randeye.com slash LASIK. It's a big group of scouts up in the uh, home run porch in right field. They had a parade before the ball game. Bob the Shark has become the most asked about sea creature. And he has his own plush doll day. That's a breakthrough for Bob. He's going places. Grady Sizemore's going places. Lines it to left. Each row, look out. <laughs> Battling the lights. And each row just trying to get to a place where he could see the ball. We've seen each row a couple of times over the last uh, few games do this exact same thing. Well, I'll get down on my knees. I'll bring that uh, band of lights down a little bit and make the play. Endearing. Is that is that the best way to describe it? I mean, he's endearing watching him play. You know, it, it, he's just so much fun to watch right now. And I'll tell you what, Hud, he's different than he was when he arrived in Seattle in 2001. Ashy takes a strike. I was there. I, I saw him for... All the way through the 2004 season, he was an incredible player. He was obviously the MVP and Rookie of the Year. But it seems like he's he's playing with much more of a flair of an enjoyment of the game. 
Well, w without question, it's a different time in his career. Uh, happy to be here. He has uh, talked about that. His teammates love him. Two and one to Cody Ashi. Gozart catches the corner. And it's two and two. Ashi, one of the uh, young players that the uh, Phillies are banking on improving. Got a breaking ball. Ashi didn't like it, and he turns to Paul Schreiber and heads back to the dugout. Well, whether it caught the plate or not, it's a heck of a pitch because it's that curveball. And it looks like it did. We talked about all the fastballs and number fives in the zone. Good pitch by Jared Kozart. It's a strike. It's one of those where Ashley will probably go back, watch the video. There's Cesar Hernandez. Just watching for uh, an inning and two thirds. Jonathan Solano looks very quiet behind the plate, very calm. And that's his uh, job description. Very solid receiver. A guy that pitchers like throwing to. The Onion was his nickname a few years ago. He was actually signed. He's obviously from Colombia, but he signed in a tryout camp in Venezuela, and he had to sneak into Venezuela apparently in an onion truck. It paid off. One and two. And a little history today as the Colombian brothers are in the same starting lineup, the Solanos. And he is uh, a couple of years older than Donovan. But Cozart's just uh, pouring across strikes. There's such good movement, natural movement with Cozart's fastball. Yeah, I think, too, as we've seen over the last two, three starts, We've seen improvement in his secondary pitches too. A few more change-ups, a few more curveballs, and then he still has that uh, hard fastball that he pounds. One and two. Hernandez made a special guest appearance in Game One. Marlins in this series a 4-3 win. With the walk off hit by Ozuna scoring Stanton on Friday night. Last night, a dominating performance behind Dan Heron, 7 0. Martin Prado drove in four. Donovan Solano gets in on the act in his throw. Morse comes off the bag, and Hernandez is safe. And we'll have a look at that one again. Well, it looked like the throw pulled Michael Morse off. He had time. He may have rushed it a little bit. You notice the arm wasn't up where Perry Hill likes to see it. And that elbow drops down. When the elbow drops down, the throw sails a little bit. It sailed. It took Michael Morse off the bag. Cameron Rupp, the eight hitter. So that's the first error. For the Marlins on this homestand. Liner to right, stand in there, and he makes the catch. That got there in a hurry. Two scoreless innings so far for Jared Kozar.
Going for a sweep of the Phillies. This copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the Miami Marlins may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Miami Marlins. Jared Cozart has been all smiles since the start. You made a good observation. He's if he were left handed he would really fit into that he is a loose guy he's, he's fun he, he has a really quick uh, and sharp sense of humor. Nothing seems to bother him. It's Michael Morse. But you know he's a competitor and competes. Reed Brignac and Donovan Solano. On their way up as well against Severino Gonzalez. And you can see the infields. All grouped on the left side. Morse complies, sends it that way. Ashy across the diamond in time. So went out here in the second. And here comes Reed Brignac. Severino Gonzalez out of Panama. Brignac climbs in. Of course, Brignac, a New Orleans guy, Louisiana guy. Yeah, season a few years ago, 2010, with Tampa Bay, played in 113 games, hit near 260, had eight home runs. And not a, not a remember start of the season in triple A and it was the injury to Don Kelly after just three games in triple A for bring yet that brought him up here saw Don Kelly today in the clubhouse he showed me he showed me the finger <laughs> he showed me his broken uh, finger the, the one that broke on the tip and it's healing nicely and he is on track to get back into this lineup or get back onto the roster, I should say. There's Kelly. 2 2. Oh. It's Darren Ruff, and he makes the catch. The New Orleans 10 game mini plans are on sale now, and the 10 game plans start as low as 240 bucks, include tickets. To some of the season's biggest games at Marlins Park. Quantities are limited, so secure your 10 game plan today. 1 877 Marlins. Go to Marlins.com slash 2015 tickets. Now Donovan Solano shortens the bunt, takes a strike. Just 13 at bats for Donovan Solano. Ground ball left side. Ashy is there. Looks like Severino Gonzalez is settling in after 2 1 0 Miami.
Seattle Little Leaguers, Bob the Shark Dolls. And Miami trying to finish off an incredible homestand. Already one sweep, that of the Nationals. Took two of three from the first place Mets. After taking the first two against the Phils, a chance to sweep Philadelphia. Here's Gonzalez, his first major league plate appearance. He swings and misses. Now, current Panamanians in Major League Baseball, some catchers on this team, certainly Carlos Ruiz, Christian Bethencourt of the Braves from Panama. Just saw Ruben Tejada. Manny Corpus and Randall Delgado, other Panamanians who are in the big leagues. You and I were noticing the uh, the scout, uh, the former player, the scout who signed it, Severino Gonzalez. You have to really know your baseball history of the 70s to recognize this name. Here's the 2 2. Swing and a miss. Alan Lewis. The name of the scout. He was one of the pinch runners that Charlie Finley used, and his nickname was the Panamanian Express. And why not? <laughs> it's a great nickname. Panamanian Express. Alan Lewis was the scout that signed Severino Gonzalez. Here's Ben Revere, infield single for Revere. Well, you look at Cozart's last couple of starts against the Mets. He had a one nothing lead. Remember, it was a scoreless game. Marlins got a run in the bottom of the eighth. Cozart left that game for a pinch hitter, Justin Bohr, and that was essentially the spot that ended up scoring that run. So there's the. The Mets start. The only run in that Philly start was a, a second inning home run. From Cody Ashy. See three starts ago in New York. He was knocked around a bit gave up five runs one one. He's out. It's one and two. There's his change up. That's a fair ball. Morse has it. Spins. Nicely done. Cozart gets to the bag. And together they get a speedy runner in Ben Revere. Well, that's a really nice play. And it takes both ends of that to complete that play. Michael Morse with a good pick. Kind of drifts into foul territory. And you got to pick it and throw. You're not sure. And Cozart has to get over there. You're not sure if it's fair or foul. He got over there in plenty of time. Job. Well done on both ends. Now Chase Utley. Those are struck Utley out back in the first one for nine is Utley that one. Was a three run homer. In game one of the series. You were talking, Rich, about the consistency this year of Jared Cozart. He's really been consistent since he's been a Marlin. He's had 14 starts as a Marlin, a 5 5 record and a 242 ERA. Now the Marlins knew they gave up. A couple of really good players to get him, but they felt a young pitcher, controllable in terms of contract for a good number of years. Jake Marisnik is having a really nice year in Houston. That's good to see because uh, Marisnik, you could tell, was on the cusp of being a. a a good major league center field. He was a dynamite defender in center. If he just had figured out the the hitting part, and it seems like he has. Riznik has found a home in center in Houston. 
Little tapper, Cozart pounces on it. And it was a one hopper. Nice pick by Morse. A one, two, three, third. Pick it up where he left off. His last start. Rare error, but boy, has their defense been shining all year long. In fact, the historic numbers so far, the Marlins have allowed only one unearned run. One unearned run all year. It happened on April 13th. There was a Jared Salta Lamaki error in the center, and eventually, although not in this particular play, Christian Betancourt will score, and that's the only time they've given up an unearned run in 24 games heading into this ball game today. Where does it rank for the Marlins? Well, it's been a while for anybody. Look at this, since 2000, only the Phillies in 09 had no unearned runs through 24 games. That's covering 15 years, and the Marlins are in the company of six other teams with just the one unearned run. Amazing to see for the Fish so far this year, and it's a big reason why they've turned it around. Although the defense is probably, guys, the one thing that you could say has been steady from day one. Yes, it has. That and D. Gordon, I think. The defense and D. Johnson, Solano, Jared Cozart, and Ichiro. Johnson, a breaking ball, and he lifts it out in the center. Ben Revere is there, and he makes the catch. Johnson, Solano's first AB is a fish. Severino Gonzalez has an out here in the third. Yeah, that the defense is it's so true too because you can have a stretch such as the Marlins have had uh, hitting over 300 pitching the way they have but if the defense isn't there yeah, maybe a game or two that you don't win because of that defense. Cozart will chopper stops himself on his way to first and he's thrown out. If a child has a birthday and wants to have a party, why not come to a Marlins game? All new celebration club party or the Sea Creatures birthday bash. Enjoy an inclusive food package that comes with the birthday cupcakes for everybody. Parties available as well for groups of 20 or more. Go to Marlins.com slash groups 1877 Marlins. Each row with two Hi. outs. He takes a strike. Ichiro walked, swipe second, swipe third, scored on a Stanton sacrifice fly. It's 0 2. The second stolen base. Stolen base, the third. He's 85% in his career when he steals third base. He has 109 steals of just third.
That ball, I don't know if it bounced or not, but it sure looked like it. I've seen him do that before where in a two strike count, a ball would bounce and he'd make contact with it. Oh, he just got it before it hit the well, dirt. It didn't, but it was close. In fact, if memory serves, there's a video, and we may have to go find it, of Ichiro getting a base hit on a ball that bounced, and this was in Japan. Pitcher bounced the ball, and Ichiro lined it in the right. Gonzalez misses with a breaking ball, counts one and two. Manny Sanguian was uh, well known for doing that every every so often. Another Panama product. Ichiro taps it over the middle and Hernandez I don't think it was going to get Ichiro anyways. That should be a base hit. It had a bit close but uh, when when it's that close it should be an infield base hit all the way. Just past the mound it would have had a been a perfect pick and throw and get something on it. I think Ichiro should get the base hit and he does infield single and that was one of those swings where Ichiro was nearly out of the box when it left the bat and had a head of steam and let's see if he tries to steal second here with Echeverria up he doesn't look like a 41 year old who's been playing for the last two weeks day game after a night game <laughs> Danny Echeverria struck out swinging in the first. And he's running. Etch takes the throw. He is out. And so Ichiro thrown out. And Echeverria will lead it off when the Marlins get to the fourth. We head to the fourth. Miami up 1 0. Jared Cozart has been sharp again, just like he was in his start on this homestand against the Mets. When he went eight scoreless innings, he left with a one-nothing lead. That was the night Daniel Murphy homered off of Steve Ciszek. Here's Darren Ruff. Ryan Howard, Grady Sizemore for the Phillies. The Phillies are giving a few regulars the day off. Odubel Herrera, the young rookie, who has a couple hits in the series.
Carlos Ruiz and Freddie Galvis not in the lineup. Marlins headed to Washington D.C. to take on the Nationals. Who have started their way back it feels like offensively. They've been scoring runs over the last four days. And are 11 and 14. Darren Ruff's a guy rich you you might. Never know I mean, he's 28 years old but with Ryan Howard. Over at first base. Ruff's in left field today but that's really his position first base. It's a guy who showed power in the minor leagues. Hit 38 home runs. Three years ago in double A. It's kind of a rock and a hard place isn't it for the Phils they want to. Showcase Howard. You want him playing and producing so you can trade him and get the best value. But you got a young player. Like rough and you want to see what he's got as well. It's kind of. Uh, kind of like the Ryan Howard Jim Tomey situation that Howard's arrival was a little later. Because uh, Tommy was over there at first base. Well, here is Howard. It's not been a smooth ride in this series. He's 0 for 8 with five strikeouts, including going down swinging to end the first. Gozart misses away. The Nationals. Are actually in New York to take on the Mets. They've got Doug Fister going right now. Ryan Zimmerman is knocked in a run. It's one nothing Nationals. In the bottom of the third. Forget about sometimes the the solid. Entire season. That Jared Cozart had last year. Of course he arrived. To the Marlins in uh, late July, but if you put his Houston totals and his Marlin totals together, 13 and 11, 30 starts, over 180 innings, and a nice ERA around three and a half. That's why you give up a Jake Marisnik and a Colin Moran, is to get a guy like that, put him in your rotation for the next four or five years. And it helped, obviously, for Michael Hill and Dan Jennings, that the Marlins have an outfield of Yelich, Ozuna, and Stanton, as young as they are and as good as they are. Howard didn't clear the bat out, and that's a foul. Count one and two. Yeah, I think that's how trades are made sometimes. Other organizations see that and go, well, the Marlins are pretty set in the outfield. They may have some young talent. Coming up, of course, Marisnik came up in the uh, Blue Jays organization. And so, I mean, it's funny because people talk about the big trade with the Blue Jays. As you watch this one, just out of the glove of Solano. Obviously, Echeverria, one of the names that came in that trade. But you have to say, Cozart is a, a result of that trade because Marisnik was the big piece. To get him here, and Marisnik came in that Blue Jay trade. The Marlins' top pitching prospects, Justin Nicolino, who just continues has an ERA about 060 right now. Here's the 2 2. Pitch misses out. Di Sclafani, Anthony Di Sclafani on to Cincinnati for Matt Latos. By the way, Matt Latos, his session yesterday went well. The hamstring. Held up. And I think that was the key to see how he felt today. And it looks like he's uh, good to go for his next start. Really nice changeup. And Howard strikes out. Because of the usage of the changeup and some good curveballs, all of a sudden, Jared Cozart has five strikeouts in this one. Then you look at the other side of that trade, Rich. You have. Well, still going strong, Mark Burley, albeit for a pretty 
pretty good price. Uh, Jose Reyes on the disabled list. Grady Sizemore lined to left. Shoots one out to short. Echeverria gathers, fires to first in time. It's another one, two, three for Jared Kozar. Today, brought to you by Checkers. Get Checkers authentic Philly cheesesteak. Try the new meatball sub. Pick yours. Roof closed. Rolling windows shut. AC on on a warm Sunday afternoon in Miami. With the Marlins on top, 1-0. Rich Waltz, Tommy Hutton, Craig Minervini. Tim McDermott, our producer. Gary Nicholas, our director. Danny Echeverria, a high pop. It brings a leap by Ashy. I think he just got a glove on it. But Echeverria will live to see another pitch. Yeah, it did touch a little leather. Gonzalez gets in on Etch and the counts 0 and 2. Giancarlo Stanton, Marcelo Zuna also do up here in the bottom of the fourth. A run on a hit. It was an Ichiro run back in the first. A walk, two stolen bases, and he scored on a sack fly. So it seems like the youngsters settled down a little bit better. A couple of years ago, Severino Gonzalez. At 27 starts in double A and was there Paul Owens award winner Paul Owens a longtime Philly executive came down out of the front office managed a little bit. The second major league start cuts it and sinks it. And and you would think because he's from Panama he's probably working on a cutter too. <laughs> you could uh, you could run out a pretty good team. If you just chose Panamanian players through history, I don't know that Severino Gonzalez would make the cut. But I mean, you go back into history, you got Rod Carew. I mean, he's pretty good. Roberto Kelly, El Caballo, Carlos Lee, Omar Moreno, if you need a little speed, Ben Ogilvy, give you some pop. 
Of course, Mariano Rivera, you want to close the game. Manny Sanguian behind the plate. Rennie Stennett from Panama. Stanton just blisters one right through the shift and takes a big turn and holds it first. You could, I mean, it's almost like you could put all eight Phillies over there on that side. Yeah, you could put everybody over there, and this ball's going to find its way through because it was hit so sharply. I mean, infielders are leaping and diving, and the ball's already in the outfield. Stands aboard. Here comes Ozuna. Marcelo Zuna has been hot. Six for ten in this series. In the opener of the series, he had the four for four game with three doubles. 111 off the bat. One and two. Just got me thinking more about that. Trade with the Blue Jays. Let's not forget Henderson Alvarez and Jeff Mathis. Ozuna pops it into shallow center. Revere a long run and he won't get there. Stanton had to hold and wait and he arrives at second. You know, I, I think that's a result of Ozuna having a not only a big swing, but also having hit lasers all over the ballpark in this series. See Look Revere's at, first step. Yeah, his first step. His first two steps are back. Plus, he was playing deep as it was, and even with his speed, he never could recover. Of course, a whole different story playing center field in Philadelphia in that ballpark. Yeah, no kidding. So Revere comes up short, and a nice spot for Michael Morse with runners first and second and one out. But it was those first two steps that cost him. Morse fouls it back to the screen. Morse bounced to third in the second. A bullet and a bloop, the two hits in this inning. Now the Marlins should take another bullet in the cap. Take a little uh, a bloop. I think, uh, especially for Morse, just looking for some success at the plate. High pop up, and it's out of play. Clean, crisp Coors Light brings you a cold hard fact. Nine game homestand. Best batting average over that homestand. Right now, the Marlins could set a team record. Testament that Morse has not been tearing it up offensively, but the ball club has been winning. Shows you how deep this team is. And you would expect Michael will pull out of it. He'd like to get back in that uh, RBI track. Just one RBI in his last 10 games. A few years ago, when he had that big year with uh, Washington, 31 home runs, he got off to a really slow start in the month of April. 1 2, and he lifts it down the right field line. Out of reach. 
for both Sizemore and the fan who leaned out and had a glance off of the glove. Ozuna and Stanton still out there. One two coming to Morse. Check swing ball in the dirt no swing. And it's two and two. Got him. Change up to a right hander. 84 miles an hour. Pretty good pitch by the young pitcher. Certainly not what Morse is thinking about from a 22 year old making his second major league start. You know, from delivery and build, he kind of looks like the artist formerly known as Leo Nunez. Brignac. Fouls it off. Yeah, but just looking at a few years ago, it was 2011. Michael Moore said that big year. 31 home runs, 95 RBIs. In the month of April that year, he hit 211 with just one home run and nine RBIs. And then started to get hot. Ball on the strike. Reed Brignac getting the start at third base. Martin Prado the day off. And Brignac hits a line drive right at the third baseman, Cody Ashey. He snares it, and the Marlins leave a pair. Take a look at our Geico Major League moment. This day in history, in 1980, Ferguson Jenkins, fifth Major League pitcher to win 100 in each league. He joined uh, Al Orth, Cy Young, Jim Bunning, and Gaylord Perry. Since other, or since then, five others: El Presidente, Nolan Ryan, Randy Johnson, Kevin Brown, and Pedro Martinez have joined. That group. Cody Ashy, Cesar Hernandez, Cameron Rutt for the Phils in a game that arrives in the fifth. Not a lot of offense, just four hits combined. The Phillies have just one. Cozart's been super. Five strikeouts and no walks.
He's gone three and zero oh on Ashy. Called out on strikes. His first time up. By the way, we mentioned uh, Juan Carlos Oviedo. Can't we can't seem to locate him as far as baseball? He pitched last year with the Rays, both in Triple A and in Major League Baseball. Like he pitched in the Dominican Winter League as well. Let's get our crack staff on that. I don't know that they're even awake on this Sunday. It's always a quick turnaround for the crack staff. Lead off walk to Ashy. Four o'clock games help though. They they seem to like those. On Saturday. Cesar Hernandez. Who reached on a Solano error. Have to be more specific. A Donovan Solano error. This would be one of those situations, not necessarily on the first pitch, but if Ryan Sandberg's thinking about putting on a play, he could do it with this combo, especially in a one-nothing game. The latest I could find on uh, Juan Carlos Oviedo signed a minor league contract with the Texas Rangers and re was released at the end of training camp on March 28th. Hernandez ready, 0 1 pitch from Kozar. Just missed. Redman not calling pitches. He's signaling in whether he wants to pitch out or throw to first. Cozart has hit a bump in the road here. Nationals tomorrow night. 6:30 start. Marlins live. Bouncer etch in the hole. This will be a tough one to turn. Solano will have to eat it. Hernandez runs well. Cozart gets an out. Double play still in order. And here comes the catcher, Cameron Rupp. Yeah, that's all you're trying to do there. Echeverria knows that. Just get the one out. Make sure you, you catch it cleanly. Make a strong feed to second because there's no chance to get a double play. He does that. There's the catch, the feed. And a good job by Donovan Solano to hang on. Rupp line to right in the second. Runner bluffs and a swing and a miss. Nationals Mets are now in the fifth and that game is one nothing Washington. Atlanta's got three early runs and a three nothing lead over the Reds in the third. Count a ball and a strike. Well you have. League City Texas you have Cameron Rupp out of the University of Texas. Big City, Texas, just outside of Houston. By the way, there's a perfect example of Jonathan Solano and what he brings back there defensively. JT Riomuto getting a day off and watching on the rail with D. Gordon.
Another line drive to right. This one Stanton will play on a hop and get back in quickly. Rupps hit it hard twice. Stanton caught his first one in the second. Severino Gonzalez, the pitcher, comes up with one out. It's just the second hit for the Phillies. Miami has just three hits. In a one nothing Miami lead in the top of the fifth. See if Sandberg has the uh, young pitcher up there trying to drop down a bunt. He squares Morse coming in tight. Strike starts the at bat it's 0 1 1. A lot of things to think about the infield if. If you get a bunt that's not a good one. Yes you might be able to get the lead run at third but you also have a shot to get Rupp going from first to second who doesn't run that well. Severino Gonzalez looks like a guy that hasn't bunted much. And if he's just come through the minor leagues this is just his second major league start. There's a pretty good chance of that Pete McCannon. Down at third base given the signs for the Phillies. They'll have to get some bunting tips from Alan Lewis. Fouls it off. And so Gonzalez is out. Runner still first and second, and it's Ben Revere coming up. Of course, the other Philadelphia correlation to Alan Lewis. Alan Lewis, the, the late, uh, longtime Philadelphia Inquirer. Hall of Fame writer covering Phillies baseball for a long time. Not the Panamanian Express. Not the Panamanian Express, no. Cozart trying to wriggle out of this inning. Revere has an infield hit and he bounced to first his last time up. Couple doubles and three triples for Revere. Who had gone the longest time in the big leagues without homering until last year. He finally went deep last year. In fact, he homered twice. First career homer came in his. 1,466 at bat, longest streak streak to start a major league career without a home run since Frank Tavares back in 1972 through 77. Frank Tavares, a shortstop with the Pirates. Cozart's 2-0 pitch to Ben Revere. Ground ball in the hole at short. Echeverria under his glove and into left field, and the Phillies have tied the game. Echeverria to his right didn't leave his feet. I think he was thinking about getting the out at second. Yeah, I wonder if he was thinking a little bit too much. It wouldn't have been an easy play, obviously, to try to get the force at second base. But in that situation, Number one you want to keep the ball in the infield you want to knock it down but I think etch is thinking he came up on it a little bit he's thinking come up get the out we'll be out of the inning well that didn't happen and all of a sudden it's a one one game going to go as a base hit and here's Utley Marlins look like they're about to appeal third base. And the umpiring crew said that Hernandez touched third. Here's a look. Yeah, he touched it. He landed right in the middle of it. And it's one and all. So Kozart giving up his first run in his last two starts.
Utley a hot smash. Morse has it. It's a catch. And the inning is over, but not before the Phillies tie it up. Ben Revere with a two out ground ball single. This is the smaller version here in this ball game. Marlins.com, your one stop shop for breaking news tickets, sweepstakes, merchandise, and more. You can sign up for free Marlins emails and text alerts, and you can receive year round Marlin coverage, offers, discounts, and more. Marlins.com, the place to go and become an insider. Marlins will send every Solano they have to the plate in this inning. First Donovan. Then Jonathan. And uh, then Jared. I remember there was a great uh, moment in spring training at uh, one of the spring training games where where Jonathan got a base hit game winning RBI that drove in Donovan. That's a great look right there. That's up the middle and Utley slides and kicks it Solano around first. And he'll hold there. And so Donovan's got himself a hit. Off the glove, might have ticked the bag off uh, Utley's glove and leg. That ball hit a whole lot of things. And it's a base hit for Donovan Solano. So a hit, and here is Jonathan. Jeff Mathis still coming back from the broken hand. His break, Mathis's break, a little more severe than Don Kelly's. That one is rightful down the left field line and into the corner it goes. Donovan Solano around third. He is in there. And Jonathan Solano. Him in. How about that? Their first start together in the big leagues and they combine for a run. That's just a beautiful thing. Nice going, Solanos. Keep in mind, too, it's been a while. Look how, how Jonathan brings his hands in. It's been a while since he's played. He was not off to a great start in Triple A, and all of a sudden he came here and then sat for a while. Gets the call, drives in Little Bro, and gives the Marlins the lead. And the reaction from Jonathan when he got to second base was outstanding. 
You remember in 2012 when Jonathan was called up by the Nationals, Donovan had been in the big leagues for about a week and a half, and the parents came in to see them, to see history, the 11th and 12th Colombians to get to the big leagues. And the parents switched jerseys every night. One had a, a Marlins jersey one night and a Nationals jersey the next. Now when they come to see them, they can just put the Marlins gear on. It's a whole lot easier. Those are trying to push Jonathan Solano to third. Strike. Ichiro and a Danny Echeverria after Cozart. Marlins back on top 2 1. And Cozart fails to bunt. Ichiro and a Danny Echeverria to cash in on this second run of the inning. Yeah, and I don't have to tell you the importance of this second run to, to give the, the Marlins a two run lead. Ichiro has walked, stole a couple bases, and scored on a sack fly. They're going to say that he went. Ichiro's not happy. They say next time. <laughs> he felt like he pulled back. That's got to be a tough call for an umpire. Home plate umpire or even the third base umpire. Probably a tougher call for the home plate umpire. Manny Gonzalez down at third. Counts one and one to Ichiro. Dribbled an infield hit up the middle his last time up. Jonathan Solano's at second. He just knocked in his brother. Ichiro floats it into the seats. The attack of the Solanos. Donovan a leadoff single. Jonathan an RBI double. Nitro is retired on a comebacker. <laughs> South Florida Honda dealers will get you ready for Marlins and Nationals tomorrow. 6.30 start live from D.C. Craig Preston and Jessica will be there. David Phelps. Jordan Zimmerman. Echeverria struck out twice in this game. He's 0 for 2. Lines it to right. Sizemore is there. And he makes the catch. The Marlins will have to settle for a Solano run. And it's 2 1.
supports. Is proud to team up with Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Boys and Girls Clubs help young people reach their full potential as productive, caring, and responsible citizens through programs that promote character, leadership, education, healthy lifestyles, and more. For more information, visit foxsportsupports.com. Sunday in Miami and an opportunity for the Marlins to sweep the Phillies. Stay on this really nice ride. They've won nine of ten, four straight, have themselves back at 500. Right now they got a 2 1 lead in the sixth. Darren Ruff fouls it back, Ryan Howard and Grady Sizemore. All scheduled to appear here in the sixth. Be an interesting inning for Jared Cozart, who was brilliant through four, mortal in the fifth. Gave up a run on a couple of hits, had a key walk in there to open up that inning. Yeah, left a couple of uh, fastballs up. Looked like he wasn't coming through with everything with the delivery, but well, all in all, solid from Cozart. Could be his last inning if he has a nice one. He's at 84 pitches now. One and two. Of course, it's only fitting when your last name is Rough and you're a power hitter. His nickname in the minor leagues was Babe. <laughs> and he gets clipped. Cozart came in with a fastball. And so a leadoff walk in the fifth led to a run, a hit batter to open the sixth. They yeah, can see his reaction, not where he wanted to go with that pitch. Rough at first. Howard at the plate. Now Ryan Howard in this series is 0 for 9 with six strikeouts. But of course he's got the power to ride one out of here and change his uh, his fortune in a real hurry. Marlins headed to Washington D.C. to take on the Nationals. They're playing much better, scoring runs, dangerous team, great rotation. Then on to San Francisco for a date with the Giants. Four game series in San Francisco. And then down to Los Angeles. Giants are playing much better. They're back within two games of 500. But of course, the Dodgers have been playing well from the get go. They are 15 and 8. Chuck Hernandez on his way out. Cozart having trouble reclaiming what he had in the first four innings. Yeah, the Dodgers uh, all of a sudden they're, they're getting some offense. A young center fielder, Jock Peterson, is uh, doing a great job. And then when you can go through your rotation, you can always fire out a Kershaw and a Granke. Uh, two out of five times, that's going to help. Might be one of those conversations. Uh, a little bit about the situation. And then also. Get back in this thing, Jared. He's got a chance to be your last inning. Howard knocks it in the gap. Ozuna can't cut it off, and it gets to the wall, and Ruff is going to score. Howard's thinking three, headed to third, and he is there. Ryan Howard with a rare triple, and the Phillies answer right back. It's 2 2, and nobody out. Howard's at third. 
Yeah, just one triple all of last year, but he finds this gap, and you can see the power of Howard. Ball really skipped by Marcelo Zuna, and once it got by Ozuna, even Howard was able to get over to third base. Give him credit. He was going hard all the time. Big man with a hit first slide. Now the infield is halfway. Here is Sizemore. Howard doesn't run that well, as you just saw. Ready, Sizemore is lined out, bounced out. So the Marlins trying to choke off this run at the plate. Liner into left, and the Phillies have a lead. Brady Sizemore with an RBI hit. And for Jared Cozart, the wheels are wobbling. And I think you're right, too. You go back to last inning. The walk, a couple of hits. The Phillies were able to get a run. And that's going to be it. Whatever Mike Redmond and Chuck Hernandez have seen from Cozart, they would like to go to the bullpen now and see if the Marlins pen can get this under control. The Phillies have two quick runs here in the sixth. Kendall Toyota called to the bullpen. Gate here in the sixth. Jared Cozart hit Darren Ruff. Ryan Howard RBI double. Grady Sizemore RBI single. And so AJ Ramos out of the bullpen. 13th appearance. A really nice year for Ramos as April has spilled into May. But just looking back, the last triple for Ryan Howard was at Coors Field. Last April. So the Phillies showing signs of life here. A 3 2 lead. Sizemore at first. Cody Ashey at the plate. Struck out back in the second, walk in the fifth. Ramos has had a really nice run, as you see, Cozart. Really nice run in the big leagues, though the Phillies have been one of the teams that have given him some problems. 
It's 21st appearance against the Phillies. And his ERA is over four and a half. Which kind of doesn't go along with all his other matchups. Two balls, two strikes. Nationals and Mets in the sixth, and it's one nothing. Washington. That's a swing. Ramos gets a strikeout. Well, we we mentioned it often. He has so many put away pitches, and it gets. Cody Ashey to commit to that off speed to change up and he couldn't hold back. Now Cesar Hernandez. Sizemore still anchored. Over at first base. Ichiro. And Ichiro makes the catch. Ramos has a pair of outs. Well, if you're Miami, you're down by a run. One of the things that Mike Redmond can lean on late into the game is he's got a pretty good stable of guys he can pinch hit, pinch run, or do whatever he wants with. I'm sure all those guys right now are just uh, starting to get the wheels in motion and possibly get ready. Something's up. Sean Cunningham, one of the Marlin trainers with Chuck Hernandez. And I don't know if Ramos did something on that delivery or if they've seen something the last few pitches. But they're out to see to Miami's right handed reliever. Ramos, such a valuable guy. Saw the numbers that he's had this year. Here's the delivery. He's flexing A little flex of the uh, of the right arm. There's that danger with, with all the uh, arm injuries, and certainly you err on the side of caution. But Ramos has convinced everybody that he's okay. AJ Ramos, one of those that has had Tommy John, but it was years ago. It was when he was a junior at Texas Tech. Big Cameron Rupp, Phillies catcher, is lined out to right and then lined a single to right. Ramos gets a strike, doesn't show any signs of pain or flexing. No, and had a good fastball, too, 92. Rupp couldn't hold it. And it's 0 2. Rupp looks like uh, an Eagles offensive lineman up there. Go back in the 70s. Looks like Bill Berge. <laughs> That's a great call. <laughs> Google it, kids. Here's the 0 2. One ball and two strikes.
Rupp is 6'2, 260. Nice play by a former shortstop Henderson Alvarez, saving Martin Prado from yeah, peril, protecting Martin. We're somewhere down there is John Tui to our cameraman. He's uh, heavily protected by that old baseball box on top of his camera. John Tui too is so thorough he even wears a uh, protective cup when he uh, mans the camera. I see he couldn't keep the straight <laughs> face could he? No he couldn't. Every day it's a new college shirt. Is that Oregon State? What's he got on there? Oklahoma State. Liner right to third. Brignac makes the catch. Ramos slowly walks off the mound right now. And it looks like he's still in some discomfort. 3 2 now. Phillies on top. In the bottom of the sixth inning. And Justin DeFreitas, the subject of our AT&T U-verse rewind. This was that line drive homer that Stanton hit into the wind in Philly. That home run had a lot of people talking. So here's Stanton and DeFreitas. Marcelo Zuna, Michael Morse scheduled the hit as well. Once again, they have the uh, shift with three infielders over on the left side. Wow, that one right off the mask of Paul Schreiber. A glancing blow. Manny Pacquiao took a few of those last night. What a dud that was. That fight. Here's the 0-2. And Stanton swings and misses. DeFreitas gets a little revenge. Strikes him out here in the sixth. We've seen pitchers do this. They go in with that fastball. There's that fastball that catches the mask of Schreiber. And then away with sliders off the plate to get Giancarlo to chase it. Now Ozuna. Marcelo struck out and singled. Well, Brian Morris in the bullpen.
ball in a strike. AJ Ramos still on the bench. That's probably a good sign. Sean Cunningham and Chuck Hernandez. Yeah, I think if if it were something of some urgency, he'd be back in the clubhouse. But that's a good sign. Severino Gonzalez went the first five. Justin DeFreitas here in the sixth. And a vast array of sliders finishes off Marcelo Zuna. A pair of strikeouts for DeFreitas. Morse who's bounced out and struck out. Yeah, it's been a uh, a struggle just three for his last 26 it is Michael Morse and as we we pointed out before the game started this is a good matchup for him because in his career he's always hit Philadelphia very well. One, two. Jake Deakman in Philly's bullpen. And DeFreitas comes in and blows away Stanton, Ozuna, and Morse. Between the American Dermatology Society and Major League Baseball and uh, TJ Sharp is a guest here now. He's a Phillies fan lives down here in Florida. We're trying to get him over to the Marlins side but we want to talk about an important topic. You've been able to battle and survive. Thank goodness uh, stage four melanoma. Good for you. It's been a couple of years now. Tell us about it. Sure. I was diagnosed two and a half years ago when this guy was four weeks old with stage four melanoma. Uh, I was able to get on two clinical trials. The second one has worked phenomenally, and I am just about to declare cancer free. Amazing. And baseball has been working for years. We know every year the players get tested often. Fans have to get tested, especially for all of us living here in South Florida. Absolutely. It's the biggest thing uh, is prevention and early detection. If you have those two, you won't get to stage four where I was, and we will need less of the, uh, the miracle cures of cancer. And you said your, your little guy here was what, just four? Four, four weeks old. Four weeks old, at the weeks old at the time, and you know we got. I got, I got worse before I got better, and there was a. There was certainly a lot of times where we were worried. I'd never get to bring him to a baseball game, mm -hmm. you know. And two years later, you know, I get to bring him here. I get to coach my daughter's soccer team. You know, I get to do things like, uh, like I always thought I would. What are some of the prevention ideas that come up when you talk to your doctor? Uh, the, the first thing is is to make sure you cover up, and you know it. it 
when you're out in the sun, it, it, it gets it can happen quickly. We're just talking how quickly you can get a sunburn. It can take 15 minutes uh, if, if you're in the pool, if you're in you know the ocean. Uh, you're, you might not feel hot, but you get hot and you get red quick. And the second thing, you know, is to make sure that these little guys are aware that they have to keep themselves, you know, shaded or covered or in sunscreen. Um, and that way you, you reduce the chance of somebody ending up where I was. Well, good for you that you've been able to battle this and do so well. Congratulations on that. Maybe we get a Marlin color on you at some point, huh? Nah, thank you. I appreciate it. Marlins have been great to me. I have a shirt at home. I just forgot to bring it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Good for you, TJ. Nice to see your family. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, Craig. Donovan Solano takes care of that ground ball off the bat of Andres Blanco, who was pinch hitting in the nine spot for the Phillies. Brian Morris takes over for A.J. Ramos. And now Morris will face Ben Revere and Chase Utley. Well, that's what it's uh, gotten to at this point now, bullpen game between the uh, Phillies and the Marlins. Revere had a big hit in the fifth when he rolled a single through the left side and gave the Phillies their first run. Phillies got two in the sixth, knocking Jared Cozart out of the game. Wow, that one right back up the box. A three hit day for Ben Revere. Hey, what are his times? And he certainly will have his eyes on second base. During this at bat. Ball hits sharply and the reaction of Brian Morris there just couldn't quite get leather on it. And you're right, a, a big day for Ben Revere. With a quick move. Morris, a big guy, but a good athlete. And that one pops out of the grasp. Of Jonathan Solano. Yeah, he's upset with himself. That'll be a pass ball. Oh, they're saying wild pitch, but that's really a pass ball. Great speed at second Revere. 1 0 count to Utley. <laughs> Luis Garcia. We told you at the outset of this series, one of the things that the Phillies do have going for them is a really nice back end of the bullpen. Solano knocks it down and throws late. And the Marlins, who have played superb defense all year long, have scuffled a bit here today. It's funny how, well, it's not funny, but timing is so important in this game. And we talk about timing with hitting, and it's just as important with defense. And you can take ground balls, you can do all that, but when you get into a game, the game action speeds up, and sometimes the timing isn't what you're used to. They're going to call that a base hit for Utley. That may be one they review during the uh, inning break and rethink. Regardless, for Morris. He's got it out, but runners at the corners, and here's Darren Ruff. D 
Dee Gordon among others getting an afternoon off. Solano in his place. Liner into left. That's a base hit. And the Phillies take advantage. A 4 2 lead now. Darren Ruff with an RBI hit. Looked like a hanging slider, and that was changed back to an error, an error charge to Donovan Solano. But uh, no error there. That ball stung by Darren Ruff. Ryan Howard now. So two errors by Miami, and now seven hits for the Phillies in a 4 2 lead. Howard shoots it to the right side. Utley round third. Stanton's got a good beat. Here's the throw. He is safe. He just got to the plate ahead of the tag of Jonathan Solano. Stanton had to make that throw from the gap in right center. And he made a pretty good throw. Five two Phillies. Boy, all of a sudden, the last two ABs have been good ones for Ryan Howard. So the veterans, Howard and Utley, bring in that run. That's a real tough play for a catcher to short hop a ball from the outfield with the catcher's glove and to go up the line to get it. And Utley was across. Darren Ruff went all the way to third on the play. Here's Sizemore. Morris needing a ground ball. He gets a comebacker, spins, throws to second, got it out there. But well, that was not an easy play. Because Morris had to do a couple things. He had to check the runner at third and then get his feet set for the throw to second. You know what that shows? It shows some great awareness out there from Brian Morris. He knows the runner is Ryan Howard going from first to second. So he knew he had a chance to get that out there after he checked the runner at third base. Phillies still have runners at the corners. Grady Sizemore replaces Howard at first, and here is Cody Ashey. 0 for 2, pair of strikeouts and a walk. So the Phillies' lead is now three. Sam Dyson in Miami's pen. AJ Ramos pitched in the sixth. Brian Morris. Here in the seventh. Solano pops out after smothering that low pitch. One and two. The pitch uh, at the letters caught some of the plate. And it is two and two now to the University of Nebraska product, Cody Ashy.
And he got him. The Marlins kick it around. And the Phillies get two more and lead it 5-2. It's the seventh inning stretch. Join Marlin players at the annual Fish and Chips Double or Nothing Casino Party on Thursday, May 21st at Marlins Park. It's an evening of poker, blackjack, roulette, craps, domino, and live music. Hors d'oeuvres, silent auction as well. Just reserve your spot. Marlins.com slash fish and chips. The Phillies bullpen now will try to hold this 5 2 lead. Luis Garcia is the second out of the pen. And he takes over for Justin DeFreitas, who was overpowering in the sixth. He struck out Stanton, Ozuna, and Morse. Reed Brignac and the brothers at Solano are scheduled here in the seventh. Getting a sweep. It's never easy in Major League Baseball, and it's proving to be problematic for the Marlins here. Yeah, the Marlins saw Luis Garcia in the first game of this series. He threw an inning. Phillies are going to make a, a few uh, changes as well. Odubel Herrera is in center, and that pushes Ben Revere over to left. And here's Brignac. He's lined out, flied out. As well, Darren Ruff goes from left field, and he's now at first base. Brignac. And there is Darren Ruff. Get into the bag and get in the out. Donovan Solano, the Solanos teamed up for a run. Earlier in the ball game, that was the fifth. Donovan singled, and then Jonathan laced a double down the left field line.
Brad Hand in Miami's pen. Solano hustling down the line. Hernandez throws him out. So two quick outs here for Luis Garcia. Jonathan a one for two day. Flight out back in the third. The double gave him his first RBI as a Marlin. Yeah, he was in 24 games with the Nationals in 2013 and 12 games with the Nats in 2012. He has two major league homers that came in 2012. Last year spent the whole season in Syracuse at Triple A. Count three and zero. Oh. Justin Bohr has emerged on deck. Three and one. It's out. And a nice day for Jonathan Solano at the plate. RBI double and a walk. Here comes Bohr, who has been so, so impressive. Especially the all the pinch hits. This is a guy that struggled in that role. We've talked about it many times last year. And this year he's four for five. I think one of the things we've really seen is aggressiveness from Justin Bohr. Has a double and is not homered. And that chopper is out to short. Hernandez on to first in time. Luis Garcia, a scoreless seventh. Phillies bullpen so far, so good.
certainly a big hit in this game. It was a triple, a rarity for Howard. That came in the sixth, and that helped knock Jared Cozart out of the ball game. Marlins had a pair of leads in this game, one nothing, and then two one. But the Phillies rallying in the sixth. They added more in the seventh. Five two, Philadelphia. Phillies head on to Atlanta after this game for a three game series against the Braves. Marlins up in D.C. Right now the Nationals. Have that one run against Dylan G and. It's enough so far that game is into the eighth inning. Washington won the Mets. Nothing to New York. We saw Brad hand the other night it was a really good inning. Nice one two three inning had a strikeout. Was throwing the ball well. Had a chance to talk to. Hand in the clubhouse. Before the ball game. This afternoon. There's the 2 0. And one of the things he's done as far as trying to stay sharp, he's changed his routine from last year. He was a long man as well, spot starter, long guy out of the bullpen. But every other day he is throwing a bullpen session just to stay sharp. 40, 45 pitches. He doesn't blow it out. Or air it out, so to speak, but he feels like it, it gives him still the feel of all of his pitches. Curveball, his fastball, has changed. It's great theory. I mean, uh, there's, there's a lot to that. The the more you throw, the more you get a better feel for pitching. Which I always thought for for young pitchers. Coming up, I think it's a detriment to see a young guy who's a one inning guy down in the minor leagues. He's never going to learn how to pitch. I don't care how hard he throws. Hand loses Hernandez. So Cameron Rupp comes up. Atlanta 5 nothing over Cincinnati. Julio Tehran has been stifling. Yeah, I think that was a Johnny Cueto start too for the Reds. He is shutting out Cincinnati on just three hits and has struck out six. And Johnny Gomes and Kelly Johnson have home runs. For Atlanta, the veterans. On a Sunday, you expect to see them get a start. Though those guys have been getting starts throughout the season. No, yeah, young kid who hit a grand slam today from up in Palm Beach County, Palm Beach Central High School, Devin Travis, hit a grand slam for the Blue Jays today. Cleveland is leading that game 8-6. But uh, Devin Travis having a real fine year. Miami will travel up to Toronto. Of course, interleague play for the National League East is the American League East. Rich will be there uh, June 8th, 9th, and 10th. Miami's first trip into the brand new Yankee Stadium. Well, it's not brand new, but it'll be new for us. Baltimore comes here. Marlins still have to go back to, or not back to, but still have to go to St. Petersburg. A return engagement. The Rays were here. Second series of the season. 
Runner goes. Good jump. Foul back to the screen. And it's two balls and two strikes. Boston and New York coming here. Marlins going to both of those spots as well. Brad Hand looking for an out here in the eighth. Cesar Hernandez at first. Hernandez started and then stopped. And the couch full at three and two. Don't know if he was bluffing or if he slipped. But he will more than likely be going here. Runner goes, swing and a miss. Solano's throw is a good one. But in with the stolen base is Cesar Hernandez. First time we've had a uh, chance to look at Jonathan. Air it out. Well, an air it out, he did. This is a perfect throw. Quick, on the money, just a great jump by Hernandez. Good clean footwork, too. Odubel Herrera resides in a nine spot. Man, the Phillies rookie outfielder. Johnson Solano out for a quick chat with Brad Hand. Well, they want to make sure. We talked about it earlier in the game. Man on second base now. Ben Revere on deck. And good speed at second. Hand out in front, 0 and 2. Hernandez watching. Hand the third reliever out of the pen. Jared Cozart went five innings. Solano out to knock it down. This pace would not endear the new commissioner, Rob Manfred. No, it has slowed down a bit, hasn't it? Runner goes. And a soft liner finds center field. The Phillies have their sixth run. Madubal Herrera drives in Cesar Hernandez. So 
six two. Well, good hitting on Herrera's part. Got the breaking ball. Didn't try to pull it or roll over. And so here's Ben Revere, who's had the best day of all the Phillies. He's three for four. And Herrera's on his way to second. He gets there. And they're they're getting big jumps against Brad Hand because the throws are right on the money. Still only one out. Broken bat hand has it. Good backhanded play. So there's the second out. And now Utley arrives. Mets lead is still 1 0, or excuse me, the Nationals lead in New York is still 1 0 over the Mets. Top eight. Been Braves fun. continue to beat the Reds 5 0 in the seventh. You've been following Rich that series. Uh, the, the Orioles have been. The home team, but they've been playing their three game series in uh, St. Pete against the Rays. A little over 12,000 last night. The Orioles mascot made that trip and has been on their dugout dancing around. I wonder if they played Sweet Caroline. Not sure. I think the uh, Rays are wearing road unis, and the uh, the Orioles are wearing their home whites. Utley pulls it foul. This was a natural uh, scheduled getaway day for Baltimore. Out of uh, Baltimore, so they'll be leaving St. Pete for a road trip, and hopeful that things settle down. And they can resume playing home games when they're done with the trip. Down goes Utley, but the Phillies tack on one more, and it's 6 2 in the eighth. In for the Phils. 
You can follow the Marlins or your favorite team all season long with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball up to the moment, any moment, in-game highlights, live look-ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat cast, and more. MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Eighth inning, Ken Giles is in, and here's Ichiro. Marlins saw Giles for parts of two innings on Friday night. He pitched a scoreless eighth, but the Marlins walked off in the bottom of the ninth in that one. Ichiro sprays one wide of the bag. Yeah, there's no question when the Marlins see him when he's at his best, it's good fastball mid 90s, maybe a little little harder and a good slider. Ichiro went. It's a swing and he's tagged out. They tried to you know get his body out there to make it appear that he didn't swing but it looked like he did. Now Echeverria who was 0 for 3. Etch gets into one drives it to center Herrera back reaches up and makes the catch. Can't hit a ball much harder than that or much deeper than that. That's 405 feet from home plate. You know, we've seen Herrera, who's not a natural center fielder as it is. We've seen him have trouble with a few balls, but he has the speed. The route may not have been the perfect one. May want to get that over your other shoulder, but either way, he was able to manage the catch. Now, Stanton. He gets a fastball and sends it out to right center Herrera and Sizemore and it's Herrera who makes the catch. It's a five pitch inning for Ken Giles. By your South Florida Honda dealers. Great look into Miami. Marlins and Phillies wrapping up a weekend series. The Marlins won the first two, but it's been Phillies today. After erasing a 1 0 Marlins lead, the Phillies have a 6 2 lead. Darren Ruff. Ryan Howard, Grady Sizemore up. Sean Connery's favorite player, Darren Ruff. Hit by a pitch, scored a run in the sixth, RBI single in the seventh. That one 
fouled out of place from Omaha. As we expected, Jonathan Papelbon looks like he will follow Giles. Rough out of Omaha. It's a great baseball town. Creighton Blue Jays, where he played his college ball. Home of the College World Series. Have you been to the College World Series? You know, I, I have not. I've and, never and, had a chance. And it's a, it's it's an event that every year uh, you watch and you you see the excitement. You hear everybody that ever goes there or participates in it. One one aspect or the other tells you what a great event it is. Jeff Francoeur likes that first pitch fastball. I think that's like in his bio in the media guide. <laughs> it's a picture of him with <laughs> hitting a first pitch fastball. And Brad Han appropriately sends a breaking ball up there. Fastball and he'll Frank rip Coeur it that second it pitch fastball too. Grant Court doubled against the Marlins up in Philly. Pitches in. And it's one and two. I know one of our our good friends, long time. Statistician Marty Aronoff goes to the College World Series every year. Always an honor to work a game with uh, Marty. Two two. That's ah, strike three called. Brad Hand with a breaking ball gets Jeff Francoeur. And here comes Grady Sizemore. Well, that's a nice curveball too. Just froze a pretty good hitter. Three games in Washington D.C. We will have tomorrow night and Tuesday night's game on Fox Sports Florida. No television on Wednesday. One of the few games we do not televise. Into left, Sizemore's bat showing signs of life here in this series. Two hits in this one. Four hits in the series. He's also lined out in the game. And here is Cody Ashy. Yeah, there's uh, there's no question when you go to uh, take on the Nationals, you, you're going to get some good pitching, and that's uh, who the Marlins will see: Zimmerman, Strasburg, and Scherzer. Scherzer on that Thursday. Didn't see Scherzer here in that series. Of course, he missed a start around that time with a bruised hand. Got it apparently hitting. He actually struck out three times and walked once. Joe Gonzalez pitched a good game for the Nets last night. A strike in its 0-1. It's Doug Fister today, and Fister against Dylan G. Six and a third for Fister, no runs. The Nationals are already three relievers into their bullpen and teetering right now. In the bottom of the eighth, the Mets are threatening second and third. Now they're two outs, one nothing, Washington. It has not been a, a good series for Cody Ashey. He has struck out seven times in this series. Brad Hand trying to get through this ninth inning. 
Gave up a run in the eighth. And they count now at three and one. Bouncer to second, Donovan Solano to first. To the bottom of the ninth, here comes Jonathan Papelbaum. Just wore the fish down. It's 6 2, bottom nine. Checkers will bring you Marlins live post game show. Oh, hello. Jeff Conine on the set, ladies and gentlemen. Kind of looks like Jack LaLanne out there, right? I mean, remember those old exercise videos? Yeah, he's, uh, he's getting the, uh, the broadcast voice ready and also the model pose. Did you notice that? Yes. Very nice. Marcelo Zuna, Michael Morris, Reed Brignac, and a whole host of pinch hitting possibilities if anything develops for Mike Redman. And Ozuna turns on one. Ashy is there to get it. One pitch, one out. And Giles threw five pitches, got three outs. Papelbon's thrown one, he's got an out. So the last six pitches that Philly relievers have thrown, they've got four outs. Well, the last hit that the Marlins got was that RBI double from Jonathan Solano in the fifth inning. Remember, DeFreitas came on in the sixth and struck out the side. Morris takes outside. I got a question for you, Rich. Having seen Michael Morris over the years, I don't see him as a guy you'd put the shift on. We've seen him punch the ball to the right of second base on a variety of at bats. But I would expect if the shift is on, the numbers reflect it. More swings and misses. In his three at bats in this one, he has struck out twice. And he's bounced to third. Struck him out. Morris not happy. Paul Schreiber rings him up. That's what 
Papelbon has two quick outs. Well, he ran his fastball in. Did it get any of the zone? Michael Morse does not think so, and he's absolutely right. Reed Brignac now is 0 for 3. Slices one to left. He's got himself a hit. A couple of good swings today from Brignac. Remember, he lined out to third back in the fourth inning. Didn't have a whole lot of opportunities at third base today. The busy spot was second base. A good shot of the Solanos there. Donovan Solano. One for three. Jonathan. A double. And that roller is out to Hernandez and the Phillies salvage a game from this three game series. They win the Sunday game and it ends Miami's four game win streak. The Marlins will have to settle for seven and two on this homestand. No sweep for the fish. And the Marlins fall back a game under 500 at 12 and 13. So the Phillies get it done. Severino Gonzalez will get his first. Major League win. Six two, the final. Ten hits for the Phils. Marlins with six hits. Marlins live is coming up.